ladies and gentlemen. It is your favorite dark sorcerer here. Michael Heisen, a.k.a. Angelus Son of Abaddon. And today, I'm coming at you with a lecture from out Azazel. Now, first of all, what are the two things that we can take away from any given mythology worldwide, no matter what the practice is? Well, the two things are, is this. Number one, the victors tell the stories, okay? And number two, the losers scramble to preserve their mythologies, their way of life, okay? Now, what's interesting to note about Azazel is the mythology. He's got a very rich and colorful history spanning back all the way to Sanskrit. Okay, and a lot of things that have come my way personally from students to brothers and sisters of the arts and crafts is this. Which pantheon do you follow? You have the hierarchy differences from a Dante's Inferno to that of, say, the Grand Grim War, the Grand Grim War of Red Vernum that of, say, the, the sacred magic of Abram, and the mage, okay? There's a lot of different topics when it comes to that of the gods, okay? Now, we go by E.A. Coetting's viewpoints, okay, of how to become a living god, okay? Azazel is known as the ancient darkness, okay? Which in a lot of cases is true. However, his mythology and his actual historical accounts speaks otherwise to a lot of different things, okay? Number one, when we look at, say for an example, the Book of Enoch, Azazel is noted as an angel, okay? The Bible accounts and views him as the scapegoat, okay? During the time of Yom Kippur, okay? Which is a Jewish custom. It's a celebration of what the book of Leviticus describes as the sin offerings, okay? In Hebrew, during Yom Kippur, this is a rite that means the casting of lots, okay? In Leviticus 16, verse 10, Aaron, who's the head of the Aaronites, is said to have cast lots utilizing the calf, okay? The calf is associated with a lord known as, as um, the Prince of the Valley of Tears, okay? Moloch, okay? Moloch has a couple of different stories. But that's something for a different um, video, okay? Now, during this, his name is interpreted as a way of sending away, okay? Basically getting rid of, banning, shunning, all right? In Old English, specifically the King James Version, the phrase la azazel, okay, was translated translated to mean scapegoat in Leviticus, okay? And that's chapter 16, uh, verses 6 through 10, all right? In ravenous lore, Azazel was, the, was to be later interpreted as meaning rugged, okay? Now, this, this here was something that I found unique as a story because of the fact that Azaz, and L, okay, Azazel meaning Azaz, and L meaning God, okay, was referred to as the casting down the cliff or of the mountain, okay? And you'll see where this comes in in a little bit. Uh, the Greek definition 
the philosopher, and I'm probably going to butcher this guy's name, okay? And you'll notice that a lot of the names throughout history have a weird spelling, okay? And the Greek philosopher Sep, uh, Septonint, spelled S-E-P-T-U-A-G-I-N-T, understood the meaning of Azazel to, as being sent away, which is the Greek Apodio Pompeo dot, okay? The Vulgate Bible speaks to, namely the King James and Martin Luther, all speak to the Young's literal translation of Aaron casting lots on two different goats. Okay. Now you'll you'll notice a lot of this stuff is really the same story being cast again and again and again. Okay. But this is something that I found very, 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 and I'm going to say this again, very intriguing. The Messagera Cabal system speaks to Zazazel, okay? Now, through my own research, I found nothing on Zazazel himself. However, it wasn't until I came across a text known as the, Pes the Peshita, spelled P-E-S-H-I-T-T-A. Spelled, uh, P -E -S -H -I -T -T -A. Azazel is referred to as Zazaziel, okay? sometimes referred to as with, or I should say with a Y-E-L or an I-E-L, but in this case, it was I-E-L, okay? And it, it's found in the Quimram fragment for Q-180, okay? Now, for those of you who do not know what the Quimram is, it is a scroll that was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is ancient uh, Sanskrit, okay? Now, the Dead Sea Scrolls itself mentions Azazel in line six of 4Q203, uh, the Book of Giants found in the Quimran, okay? The Book of Enoch, which is another great source of information on the fallen angels, okay? What said... Azazel is said to have taught men to forge weapons of warfare, okay, and women to paint their faces, meaning makeup, okay, and the art of seduction, all right. He also taught coats of mail and corrupted men, according to the book of Enoch, chapter 10, verse 8, all right. Now, the Apocrypha and is associated with Genesis chapter 6, verses 2 and 4, through 4, okay? That's verses 2 through 4 in the book of Genesis chapter 6. Azaziel, spelled with a Y-E-L at the end, was seen as the chief Gregori, okay? The Greek titan Prometheus is compared to both Enoch 1 and that of Leviticus 16 within the judgments, okay? Meaning Dudiel spelled D-U-D-A-E-L. Now, what's interesting to note here is the castings of judgments. According to whose judgments are we referring to? That of man's or that of God's, okay? Now, and you'll see where this is going in just a little bit, all right? Apocalypse of Abram, okay, or Abraham. Azazel is associated with the serpent and hell. Um, basically, perhaps Genesis 15, verse 11, and again in 23, verse 7, which describes birds and carcasses. Even Abram, 14, verses 5 and 6, in, in chapter 31, verse 5, speak to the firebound of the furnace. Abraham 20, verse 5, in the King James book of John, verses 12, 31, speaks to Satan being the prince of this world which also backs up 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, all right? The Mishra in Hebrew, the Hebrew Bible, book of Yama, 35a, speaks to the ritual 
the high priest performs labeling the two goats. Isaiah 1 uh, verse 18 speaks to the scarlet thread, okay? In medieval Jewish lore, the scholar, this is going to be another name I'm going to be probably butchering, but the scholar Namanides, spelled M-A-H, M-A-N-I-D-E-S, believed Azazel and Samael were the same demon associated, associated with sins and returned to the land of desolation. Okay. The Sinar, the book of Zechariah, chapter 5, verses 6 through 11, Leviticus 14, verse 7, Yama, VI, 4.66b, Yama, VI, 6.8, and Ta'ar, IV, Eight, all speak to the fear of Azazel, okay? Now, up until this point, you've seen the same story being cast time and time again, all right? And the two aspects of Azazel that we're seeing here is one, he's a demon. Another, he's an angel, okay? Now, the story of Azazel is quite simple. He's viewed in angelology as being equal to Jehovah, okay? This you can see in um, the casting of Lot in Leviticus chapter, uh, chapter 16, verse 10, all right? But the story of Azazel, really, in the casting of Lot can be seen quite well in Islamic traditions, but before we get there, I want to go into the Vulgate Bible, which is the 16th century Bible. And this Bible was actually originally associated with the Devil's Bible. Okay. Now, what's interesting here is the Quran refers to Azazel as one of three angels who lived upon the earth. Azza and Azaya. Okay. A-Z-Z-A-Y-A were the other two, which is found in the story of Marat and Horat. Okay, that's M-A-R-U-T and H-A-R-U-T. Okay, the two names. All right. Now, what's interesting to note here is that even in the Islamic traditions, they speak to the jinn or genie, the djinn. Okay, depending on which Arabic nation you're li living in, because you got to remember that there is there's North Africa. Okay, number one, you got Africa. You have um, Saudi Arabia. Then you have the independent countries such as in the Middle East, such as Israel. You have um, all these little countries that are associated here, and each section of it has a different translation as to the spelling of the jinn g-i-n the j-i-n-n the d-j-i-n-n -N, and such okay and it's really interesting to note that their magic is also associated with this deity okay and what's interesting to note here is that no matter what how should I say this? No matter what type of hierarchy you're following, Azazel being a teacher of witchcraft, of sorcery, okay, teaching alchemy, the ability to change metals and rocks and other things into a different compound, like turning um, gold into lead or lead into gold, okay? Philosopher's Stone type thing of creation and destruction. Now, what's interesting also to note here is that if you go into the grimoire of Armadale, okay, or that, or I should say, um, uh, what's his name there? Different classifications of grimoire speak differently, okay? The grimoire of, of um, Armadale, for an example, literally shows Zaniel 
to be the teacher of witchcraft, okay? Whereas in the Grand Grimoire, the teacher of witchcraft and sorcery is Astaroth, okay? So depending on the era, the type of philosophy being taught, written about, created, is seen differently. As spoken of in these scrolls, these teachings that go back over 2,000 years, okay? All the way back to ancient Sanskrit, okay? The Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, what's interesting here is that if we go into the same scroll, the Krimrim, and we see that of, say, the story of Balael being the leader of the Sons and Daughters of Darkness versus Michael, okay? Michael, the prince, okay, he who is like God in Hebrew, is spoken of to lead, as leading the Sons and Daughters of Light, all right? Now, when we look at, again, back when we associate the land of desolation, the story of that I spoke of, of Horat and, and um, Marat, okay? The priest, before doing any type of ritual throughout the ceremony, would have people going down this mountainside at certain intervals and giving back feedback on the goat that was meant for Azazel. Okay, now if you remember in the book of Leviticus, the goat was sent out into the desert, all right? The desert, meaning the place of desolate, the land of fire, this meaning desert, okay? What's interesting to note is that here we're seeing a picture being painted. The picture of the desolation, the, the hellfire. When we look at hellfire, the fire of brimstone, Okay, for an example, in the, in the noonday, it is so hot in the Sahara Desert that you, you would roast to death without water. You literally become a fiery carcass, okay? A land of suffering, turmoil, hallucinations, everything, okay? If you did not have water. So here we see this story as a literal casting away, sending out, sending away, okay? So basically, by about a quarter to halfway down this mountainside, which is so rugged, so rigid, that the legs of the goat would be cut up, basically to the point where the goat falls the rest of the way down, okay? And the moral of the story is that he falls down down and dies and becomes carcass. Now, we all know that the carcass is a way of resembling death, okay, necromantic type rituals, right? So how does this associate with the sins of man, okay? What about the punishment of the God, okay? Now, Christians believe that, or I should say the JCI believe that the The souls that have fallen away would be cast into the pit along with Satan and his demons, his followers, okay? So in this case, it would be the land of desolation, okay? But here's the kicker. There are numerous instances throughout history where we see the crime being portrayed, where we're seeing different entities being named. Satan being the chief Gregori, okay? In Hebrew, spelled Ha-Satan. Islam, El-Shaitan, okay? The accuser, the tempter of man. Lucifer being the archangel, the one who defied his God okay, the main God, and being cast away, you know, Isaiah 14, 12, being thrown or tossed out of heaven, okay, would this not be classified as 
a goat being cast away, thrown over this rugged terrain. You see my point. Okay. But then you go back even further and you see Beelzebub being known as Lord of the Dung, being worthless. You have Belial being known as the Wicked One. Go back even further. You got the ancient darkness himself, Azazel or Zazazel, okay? All of his beings have the same characteristics. Even in the Greek pantheon, we see Prometheus, okay? Even in Islam, the Quran, we see a bliss, okay? A bliss, the lord of the the djinn, okay? Lucifer, lord of the fallen angels, who he led to their demise or their fall. Azazel, the leader, the chief of demons. Either way, we're seeing the same characteristics. But here's what I found interesting. The three differences between these stories is this. Prometheus stole fire from the gods. His punishment, to be chained to the side of a mountain. A mountain, again, we're seeing that classification of the mountain, okay? Chained to the mountain to have his liver repeatedly eaten for all eternity, okay? We go into the story of Satan, where he was cast out. This is the same thing in how he's associated with Lucifer, the morning star, okay? cast out the lord of demons the lord of the fallen angels and of hell okay he was cast into the bottomless pit he was bound chained foot in hand according to revelations okay the book of revelations chapter 19 and 20 okay 21 even And then eventually, after all his followers had been sentenced to eternal damnation in the land of desolate, cast into the pit, his fallen angels cast into the pit, and eventually he himself cast into the, the pit, okay? A bliss chose to leave heaven on his own free will, to create his own because he chose to deny the God, the, this elder God, who he wanted him to bow down to a man of clay. And he said, no, I want to be equal. So he left, created his own kingdom. Did not Lucifer do the same thing? Did Satan not do the same thing? Even though there is no classification, no proverb, no scripture that said that Satan was the enemy of God. There's no scripture that says that he was cast out of heaven. The only name to be cast out according to the JCI Bible was that of Lucifer. Azazel is associated with all the sins and wickedness of mankind. So you see my point here. And I noticed it on the the uh, let me scroll up here. Oh, don't want to do that. Uh, let me see here. I can do it this way. No, oh, crap! I can't do that. That's the computer. I can't do that on. All right, for those of you on uh, the Dark Sorcery channel, I will get back to you in just a few minutes here. Okay. And on my channel, okay. And right here. All right. Um, anyways, where was I? All right. So a bliss basically chose his own kingdom to be equal with mankind. Lucifer wanted to enlighten mankind, just as Azazel gave forbidden knowledge. 
of the celestial realms to mankind, teaching them witchcraft, teaching them alchemy, and teaching them independence. This is what all these texts really describe. And what's interesting is even E.A. Coetting himself described that there is no knowledge of Azazel out there. He said that he remains a mystery. There's more on Lucifer and Satan than there is of, and I'm using my own words here, than there is of Azazel. He is truly the ghost. And throughout history, the one thing that has remained constant besides this story, this mythos, I'm actually working on two laptops and my cell phone, Anthony. So, anyways, um, what's interesting, yeah, even um, Emma Iman. Now, personally, I have found no information on Emma Iman out there outside of Emma, okay, from angel and demonology aspects. Have a good night, um, Jennifer. Okay, so a lot of these beings have really shown the action and the punishment of what they've done, the choices that they've made. But more so, it really classifies the difference between light and day. And it also goes along with the King James Version of Scripture that talks about a jealous God, okay, that really wanted mankind to be this ignorant, closed-minded fool, okay? But it wasn't until Azazel gave this forbidden knowledge that we are enlightened because we chose to eat thereof of the tree of knowledge of good and evil which is another story I found in numerous different texts. But this is just on Azazel himself, okay? So with that said, I hope this has been intellectual. I hope it's been enlightening upon Azazel and his mythos, his historical accounts, and the way different cultures see him. Not only that, but most importantly, the different languages that his name is spoken in, how his name is literally spelled, either Azazel, Zazazel, or Azaziel, okay, spelled with either an I or an E, or a Y, I should say, okay? There's a lot of different topics out there that speak to him. So the fact that E.A. Coetting himself said that there's no knowledge of him, there's not much out there of him, that he was a ghost, well, that's just a bold-faced lie right there. Because of what I just read to you, that clearly proves that Azazel has been spoken of in numerous texts. And I'm pretty sure that there's a lot more out there to speak to him in one form or manner. All right? And you're welcome, Kobe. So with that said, um, if you have any questions, hit me up on YouTube. Um, you can either post here or on my channel, uh, perhaps even message me on Facebook, okay? Either one works. I will always make myself available to you, and I will share my text, my information with you if need be, all right? With that said, have a good night, and until next time, have a good night.